And then say if we want to animate a flow trajectory, we can see we're nice and laminar, of course, coming in. Things get turbulent when we, when we pinch it through that small opening around the valve. The next, next topic we'll be covering is a piping system. Floats, again, this is fairly simple, flow through a valve. But what we'll be, what we'll be looking at here is just a flow rate to find at the inlet. We've got a pressure condition at the outlet. Um, of course, it's gonna calculate the flow rate at the outlet, but it follows conservation, uh, those conservation laws of momentum, energy, all of that stuff. So the flow rate at the outlet is going to be the same as at the inlet, of course. If we had more than one outlet, we would be able to see which outlet is more efficient, which one has a stronger flow rate, that kind of thing. But in this case, where it's a simple one in, one out, uh, it's a little bit less less interesting on the flow rate side of things. But this is this is the example that I was going to introduce the parametric study where we can do that what if analysis. We're going to gradually open that valve and see how that affects the flow field. And also with that, what if parametric analysis will be able to track data at the location of interest. So this piece of it, this what if analysis is the part that's really great about being directly integrated into the model. So we'll be able to drive that just with a dimension that we've defined as a mate in the assembly. We're, we're going to say pinch that, pinch that dimension down as well as uh, you know push it up. And what we're going to find out is uh, what ramification does that have? What kind of pressure are we building up at the inlet when we gradually close the valve? So we'll, we'll be able to see kind of the sweet spot of if we're, if we're wanting to target a particular pressure at the inlet to avoid too much pressure at the inlet. Um, how far do we, need, do we need to leave this valve open, for example? So getting into that, again, very simple, simple, Set up here, there's the inlet condition, just 20 cubic feet per minute <clears throat> at the inlet. And then there's my environmental, or I guess it's a static pressure condition at the outlet. And then just a couple of goals to track the data that we're interested in and help the solver converge. Uh, we're tracking pressure at the inlet and flow rate at the outlet. And I'm not gonna spend any time talking about the mesh today. That's kind of, uh, we can spend hours talking about the, the meshing stuff, but um, it's mostly automated. In this case, I'm just, I have a couple of uh, refinements around where the interesting stuff is happening so we can get good results around the pressure at the inlet as well as around the tight space where the valve is kind of pinching the flow. But as far as outputs go, we can say, look at a pressure plot where, you know, of course we have higher pressure at the inlet pushing the flow through, we can see where the gradients change with these contours. I can maybe smooth that out a little bit by introducing more colors so we can get a, a better picture of the flow field that way from a pressure perspective. Yeah, just to quickly show the mesh and how it's, how it's more refined in here around that interesting stuff. As well as a velocity plot here with those nice vectors in there, we can see that little pocket of really high velocity where it's squeezing through that small opening from the valve. We can see a kind of a dead zone in here with the vectors as well, where it's kind of circulating around on the back side of that valve. Of course, that's just kind of part of the design, but um, it's being able to track those trends that way and a little bit more of a global perspective with that cut plot. And then say if we want to animate a flow trajectory, we can see we're nice and laminar, of course, coming in. Things get turbulent when we when we pinch it through that small opening around the valve. But there you can also visualize that circulation around the other side of the of the valve with this in there as well. Also, kind of evaluate how how well smoothed out is the flow at the outlet at this point. See, we're still kind of turbulent. We're not quite totally laminar there. It's not quite our, all in a straight line yet. Um, maybe if we wanted to see uh, how long it took to get back to a, a steady flow rate where we, we have a nice clean velocity profile uh, that's symmetric around the pipe, we would need to you know stretch that out a little bit further and or maybe uh, have the valve be less closed so that, that um, there isn't so much velocity happening right there. So those flow trajectories, again, are really great for kind of tracking that um, the global behavior of the flow field. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just looking quickly at the chat here, and it's got a couple of thumbs up. So I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that since people are asking. Um, asking if I can elaborate on what the rule of thumb is um, for meshing with a small flow channel. So pulling up my mesh plot again here. I generally say across a small opening, uh, two is good, three is better, four is best kind of thing. Um, so like across a small opening, it's, it's a good idea to have two dedicated cells across a channel, at least two is kind of my rule of thumb that I throw out there. Um, of course, more is better. Or, you know, if things are more turbulent going through that hole, uh, that small channel, or yeah, like a, in this case, it's a small channel, but also if it's a small hole, something like that, at least two. But, you know, as the flow is more turbulent or you're trying to get really good refinement around there from like a temperature or a velocity profile perspective, uh, definitely throw like three or four across the channel in that way. That's kind of my general rule of thumb with that. So switching now, that, that's just the steady state solution here where we're looking at some, uh, you know, some like a single scenario here. In the parametric study, I can, yeah, when I activate that, you see it brings up this interface on the bottom of the screen where I can tell it what my input variables are here. So I've defined a range with step where you know, gradually I'm going to open up that, that dimension at the globe valve. So that's controlling uh, the valve here, how, how high up that is, it's a, a measurement um, there. So as that number gets larger, the valve is going to be more open. And for output parameters, I'm just gonna say give, you know, report the value that you found at those goal locations. So a static pressure at the inlet, as well as a flow rate at the outlet, those, those are the output parameters I'm interested in. From there, it builds out my scenarios for me at each one of those different dimensional characteristics and tells me what the result is for those output parameters that I requested. So, of course, we see as we open the valve more up at 3.5, there's less pressure built up at the, at the inlet. So what we can kind of see here is if we're tracking trends, there's you know about somewhere in between 2.75 and 3.25 inches of that valve being open. That's where we start building up pressure uh, as we're closing it more and more. So that's kind of the sweet spot um, for for leaving maybe if we're leaving the valve open. If you start opening it more than that, uh, you know, opening it more and more is not going to change the flow field um, at that point. If we were to open it more than three and a half or three or so somewhere in there. So that's the what if analysis. Again, really great for tracking those trends. So like what happens when I change that number? You can, you can kind of visually see that in tabular format. Of course, for more complicated examples, you might be interested in seeing more than five design points or maybe more than one variable or more than one output where you can end up with a really big table of data, data here that you can export out to Excel to go and do your favorite uh, data manipulation things on. Uh, creating charts and those kinds of things. It just exports that directly out to Excel so you can do your, your data analysis on it if you need to. Um, also, if you wanna get more information on any one of these particular design points, you can right click on that column and just say create project. And what that does is it'll create a new model configuration first and then create a new study that links to that new co model configuration that has full results. So it'll have all of these same color plots that we were just looking at for that particular design point as well. If you, if you want to go and see more details on any particular scenario you have set up. So that's just a what if analysis. We do have a couple other flavors of parametric studies like this, where we can kind of manipulate uh, the model and change dimensions, or we can maybe introduce different flow rates or different pressure conditions on our boundaries, those kinds of things. And, the other two options, the goal optimization and the design of experiments, those optimize towards a goal. So in that case, if you we were doing a goal optimization study, we would maybe specify, I want the pressure to be, I don't know, say 15, uh, 15 PSI at the inlet. Tell me what the dimension is that will achieve 15 PSI at the inlet. So it'll, it'll drive you towards that exact goal um, and, and, and tell you what the ideal number is. 
Um, design of experiments takes it a little bit further. Um, instead of just optimizing towards a single goal, you can have multiple goals as well as multiple parameters or, or variables built in, and you can weigh those goals. You know, you can say I'm 80% interest in pressure at this location, 20% interest in flow rate at this outlet. So you can kind of weigh um, your goal factors that way with the design of experiments. And again, these parametric studies, I've seen people do some pretty crazy stuff with those. So very impressive tool. A lot of really powerful stuff you can do with those.